Uh, but for now, let's talk about the metals pack as well. Aditya Velikar is joining us from Access Securities to talk to us about uh, a lot of news flow which has been happening in that sector. Let's begin by Novelis and Hindalco as well. Aditya, were you as surprised with the news flow as the rest of us? And what do you think would be the reason of this, uh, you know, IPO preparation? Yeah, good morning. So, yeah, I think one thing which we suspect is that uh, there is a uh, flare up in the capex at Novelis. So, in the Q3 call, they said that they have increased the capex guidance from uh, 2.5 to 4.1 billion dollars at Novelis, and that escalation was due to the civil and structural work. So, initially they estimated a lower capex, and then they revised it upward. So. Um, they want to keep the net debt to EBITDA, that leverage ratio in the uh, below 3x once they go for an expansion at Bay Minute CapEx in future. And currently, uh, the net debt to EBITDA at Novalis is at 2.7x uh, and they want to bring it down to 2.5x in Q4. So, in order to uh, execute the CapEx at a lower net debt to EBITDA at Novalis, I think so this is a, just our speculation that they might be raising this amount in order to fund the capex at Novelis. So that might be one thing, or they might they might use it even also for further inorganic acquisitions. So it all depends on how they how they use that that proceeds of that this particular IPO, and I think that will decide a further course of action for the stock. What are they trying to achieve out of it? Are they trying to uh, perhaps increase the sum of part valuation of, of Hindalco? Because ultimately Hindalco does not need this cash. Yes, definitely. Hindalco is cash positive and it doesn't need the cash. And if they list Novelis, then yes, it may unlock the value of Novelis. But at the same time, the holding company discount will kick in. So uh, on a net-net basis, uh, it is a slightly neutral uh, transaction, but uh, they will be able to raise this cash without raising the net debt. So without raising a leverage. So one, we can look at it from that perspective that they will be getting cash without uh, disturbing the debt structure. So, and as I said, the funding of that uh, Bay Minute CapEx will be critical because they, they have a strict, uh, what, what they have said that they don't want to exit 3X. So that that we have to see definitely means what they, what how they, use the proceeds will definitely decide that uh, how the stock will perform and uh, further downgrades or upgrades will decide it on that. And post this news, have you upgraded the stock, change the outlook, what have you done at uh, your firm? See, currently we have a buy rating, we are holding that as of now, but uh, we have to see how, um, we have to get an update from that, how much stake they offload and how many and how they use the proceeds. So that will be very critical. If they use it for uh, for uh, keeping their leverage under control and funding the CapEx, then that is a good news. But if they are using it for inorganic acquisitions uh, in the same uh, sector, then we have to see how competitive that uh, acquisition will be. And if they are using it for some somewhere else, non-core businesses, then definitely it will not be received well. So uh, as of now, it is just a speculation. So we have to see and wait uh, and uh, let us hear from the management if they need update from them that how they want to use the proceeds. Uh, based on that, we will take a call on the stock. I wanted to shift focus away from Novellis and Dalco to JSW as well because uh, there was this entire buzz around the Australian coal mine that they might be looking at taking and JP Morgan on account of that has actually downgraded the bonds of JSW Steel saying that the valuation seems a bit more expensive. Do you track this one? Any view there, Aditya? So we don't have it under active coverage so I can't give a recommendation but uh, yes, I have means uh, the valuation looks slightly expensive for that acquisition of that coal mine. But at the same time, in the long term, uh, they are expanding the steel production up to 50 million tons by FY30 and they will be requiring coking coal integration and that's a critical uh, material for them. So uh, in the short term, we, we can see that valuation is not very comfortable, but in the long term, if we think that uh, raw material integration is critical for the company, so, from that perspective, I think it is okay. To your mind, is the real underlying uh, value of a Novelis? Because that becomes a benchmark. I mean, if it lists at uh, 8, then it will have impact on Novelis stock. If it lists at 12, it will have impact on Novelis stock. Do you think that's the number to watch? 
Yes, I think uh, currently the street, or at least we were valuing it at 5.5x of its one year forward EBITDA. So uh, if it unlocks and if the, if the street values it at say more than 6.57x, then there will be some uh, premium which Novelis uh, listing will uh, will fetch. So that uh, means we have to wait and see that how much valuation the company fetches. As, as of now, from our calculation, 12 to 13 billion dollars, uh, if they clock in uh, 2 to 2.2 billion dollars of EBITDA, then uh, at 6 to 6.6x, that much, uh, that much amount of valuation we are expecting. But if the market goes ahead and gives it a higher valuation, then definitely that will be a positive. Well, appreciate your time. So glad you could join us with your thoughts.